five years ago, Thomas Jefferson and James Madison went up the Hudson River on a botanical expedition searching for butterflies and fish. They came down the river. They met in New York City with the leaders of the New York political group. They founded the coalition which has existed from that time to this between the South, the rural South, and the industrial North, who formed the Democratic Party and built this country of ours. And I cannot believe that the party which Jefferson founded is now going to put its confidence in the Republican Party. I can understand 1952. President Eisenhower hasn't been a Democrat or a Republican. But now, 1960, He's right out of the Republican tradition. Mr. Nixon stands where Tom Dewey stood, where Alf Landon stood, where Coolidge stood, where Harding stood, McKinley, Taft. Where did they get those candidates? That is the Republican Party. And is Virginia the home of the Democratic Party for to support the Republicans in 1960? It is fashionable for Richard Nixon and his four early south to say that Lyndon Johnson and I are not in the tradition of Thomas Jefferson. Well, I, there has been a change since Thomas Jefferson in the line of the 60 years. But can you tell me what Thomas Jefferson has in common with Richard Nixon? <laughs> the fact of the matter is that in Thomas Jefferson's day, the Federalist Party in my own part of New England, they expelled a senator from my state because they supported Thomas Jefferson and the Louisiana Purchase. A contemporary described Thomas Jefferson as a gentleman of 32 who could calculate an eclipse, survey an estate, tie an artery, plan an edifice, fly a car, break a horn, dance the minuet, and play the violin. What has he got in common with Richard Nixon? come down here and say that we're not the party of Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson is the only president of the United States ever censured by the Senate because he tried to break the power of the Second Bank of Philadelphia and the Whig Party. The predecessors of the Republican Party chosen in 1960 to run on a platform that our prestige has never been higher, that our security has never been greater, that our prosperity is unequal. I don't agree with it. And you have to decide what you think. I believe the United States has to do better. I believe we have to pick ourselves up and start moving into the 60s. I believe the United States has to demonstrate what they have done. So I come here to old Virginia. Both of my brothers went to the University of Virginia. I have traveled all over this country. And I know a lot more about Virginia and about its history and what it's going to do next Tuesday than Richard Nixon from California. And we're going to send him back there. I ask your help. I ask your help in building the United States. I ask your help in reestablishing the prestige and strength of our country. I ask your help in picking the United States up and let's go on Tuesday. I ask school athletic field this warm and sunny Friday morning could only be described as a seething mass of humanity. Thousands of Tidewater citizens came by car, by bus, by truck, and on foot. No one asked their party affiliation or how they planned to vote next Tuesday. But one thing was apparent. They were all here to see Senator John F. Kennedy. Kennedy arrived at Norfolk's Municipal Airport this morning in one of the last stops along an extensive campaign trail. Just four days from today, the nation's voter will decide whether or not his bid for the... Let's take this paragraph again, okay? Kennedy arrived at Norfolk's Municipal Airport this morning in one of the last stops along an extensive campaign trail. 
Just four days from today, the nation's voters will decide whether or not his bid for the presidency will be realized. Just why he came to Norfolk is perhaps apparent. At least three leading news magazines this week reported Nixon ahead in the Old Dominion. Whether or not his Roanoke and Norfolk visits will turn the tide won't be known, of course, until next Tuesday. A slight hitch developed in plans and the rally was late getting started. Various officials and dignitaries spoke as the teeming thousands waited and the Princess Anne High School band offered entertainment. But when Kennedy arrived, all was forgiven and pandemonium reigned.